Welcome to LOA Today. <laughs> Walt Thiessen, Anne Marie Kanata McEwen, and Mark Evans here on this Woo-hoo! Sunday, October the 21st, 2018, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's New York time for you, world travelers. And we are doing a couple of things <laughs> that are really different tonight. Um, this is a this is a, actually a banner night for us here at LOA Today. Uh, we are, first of all, welcoming a new co-host to the Sunday night podcast mark evans he's a stand-up comedian oh i get top billing you get top I billing, get top billing you're, the over the the, you're the star of the show here mark didn't you know that oh god hi <laughs> welcome hey emory hi nice to almost meet you the last half hour yes. <laughs> right i could see you i did i could see you when i was trying it but next sunday okay sounds good we, for for people who are wondering in the uh, the Facebook group, and even for our listeners who are wondering, what the heck are they talking about? We've been trying for the last <laughs> half hour to get Mark hooked up, and and we finally got him connected in, but he had to do it without his computer. So we're going to have to do it without seeing his face for the live stream. But our podcast listeners, they won't care because they're just hearing the audio anyway. But uh, Mark, welcome. Mark, well, should, I, should I explain what I should I explain to them uh, the way the way I explained it to you with the internet I have? Well, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, we were lucky to have two tin cans and a string, but they upgraded us recently to two tin cans and a wire. <laughs> See, it's, it's great. So it's moving te- a little slow. <laughs> it's it's great when technology is improved. I just love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you can tell, Mark's a stand-up comedian uh, from the Atlanta area, and he also has an interest yes, in the law of attraction. Um, he does his work under the name Southern Not Stupid, which he says sort of, it acts as a counterweight to the cable guy for those who know American television. And, yeah. <laughs> and he's also a really yeah, fun and interesting guy. I mean, Mark has been a touring comic since 1993. In that time, he has brought his Southern Not Stupid show to 46 states and counting, several cruise ships and a number of countries. And now he's also bringing it to the Internet. So, Mark, you can add one more checkbox to your to your list of places you've been bringing your show to. How's that? No, I'm loving it. Thank All you for right. having me. Yeah, glad to have you. And uh, Anne Marie, of course, uh, is our regular Sunday night. My, Anne Marie, this is like a different thing for us. We haven't done uh, this kind of live streaming before. But uh, how you doing? How's your week been? <laughs> great. I'm doing great. I just got back from my first Reiki class, so I am just like walking on cloud nine. I am so relaxed and balanced. I just feel like a million bucks. Nice. Really nice. Excellent. Well, what kind of what kind of class? Reiki. Reiki. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll explain. Just, just, don't, don't worry, Mark, Mark. We'll just explain. No, no big deal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm interrupting the flow. <laughs> all right. That's all right. A lot of people would say the same thing. Reiki is it's, it's not uh, that popular term these days, but uh, it's getting more and more popular, I'm happy to say. It is. It's all about healing energy. Okay, because I was doing some raking today, but it's because it's fall and the leaves were down. So. <laughs> yeah, but I don't feel good after doing that. <laughs> I have to take a nap. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can tell that Mark's been brought out for comic relief, and we I, love him dearly. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just ruining the whole Southern Not Stupid motif now. <laughs> can we, can we rewind and start over, please? Is it too late? <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> oh boy. So, in, in addition to our experiment with comic relief uh, with the Southern Not Super Guy, we also are doing something really unusual. We are now live streaming this podcast on Facebook in what is, I believe, the largest Law of Attraction group on Facebook, the Law of Attraction Change My Life group. And uh, this is something we're going to be doing on a much more regular basis going forward. Um, I, I, first of all, I want to thank uh, Selena Dion, one of the administrators of the group, who has been working with me on this, and uh, she's just as excited as we are to have us doing this. In fact, there are going to be some special uh, podcast, special um, uh, live stream events that we're going to be scheduling in the Law of Attraction Change My Life uh, Facebook group, uh, specifically for members of the group, so they can ask questions about the Law of Attraction and you know various uh, questions that come up on a regular basis. Um, Selena and I had a 
discussion about um, uh, two months ago, something like that, in which uh, I think she had posted or someone had posted, uh, one of the administrators had posted how there were a lot of the same questions being asked over and over and over again in the group. And they were trying to figure out, you know, how can we deal with that and how can we deal with some of the spurious posts and so forth. So I said, well, you know, what we really need to do is we need to uh, reach out to the members and talk with them. I mean, more than just doing posting back and forth. And <coughs> Selena loved that idea. So that's why we're doing this. So th this is like a banner day. We've got a new co-host who's absolutely making us laugh our, our butts off. We have a, a new <laughs> live stream <laughs> event going on. And we even got the technology going. I mean, this is a banner day. So thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for, for playing the role that you're playing. Um, I also want to mention, too, for those of you who are perhaps uh, new to the podcast, many of you perhaps listening on the, uh, the live stream on Facebook uh, may not have heard of the podcast before, so we provide a couple of links in the description of the post where you're listening to this. And if you scroll down, you can see the links on how to subscribe to the podcast with whichever kind of device you have. If you have an Apple-type device, there's one link. If, if you have an Android-type device, there's another link. And that way you get all of our episodes streaming right to your smartphone whenever you want to listen to them. So we invite you to do just that. We also are listing our uh, regular schedule in there so that you can know when to tune in to find us. And many of those will be live streaming to the group. Um, so lots of good things coming down the pike here, and it's going to be a, a whole lot of fun. But to, today, I think our main task today is to get to know Mark Evans, who is new to the team, and find out more about uh, who he is and uh, why he thinks that uh, he's the funniest man on earth because, well, actually, I, I probably shouldn't. Oh, I don't that. think that. You don't think so? <laughs> if I'd have thought that, you'd have heard of me. Well, let let me put true. it this way. Are you the funniest man on the podcast? I'm sorry? Are you the funniest man on the podcast? Well, well I'm hoping, but, you know, <laughs> I'm just getting to find out about you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, like, you know, is it Anne-Marie? Is, is, is that Anne your Marie. name? Yeah. I'm yes. sorry. Yes. Because I thought he was saying Emery. And we have a big college down here, and I know people work on their fingernails with that. But I'm, I'm glad I got your name right before it goes too long. It gets really embarrassing. You ever done that? You, you know somebody for, like, years, and you all of a sudden realize you don't know their last name? Yep, yep. And things like that. And, so, and it's kind of embarrassing to ask at that point. It is. I hate when that happens. Well, the easiest way to do it is just marry them. Then they get your last name and avoid so much confusion and embarrassment. Well, well, well it depends on how you look at that because Anne Marie's name is now Anne Marie Kanata McEwen, and it gets a little bit long when you do that. Well, oh, my God. Are you, McEwen is my last you just name. just get married? Or? Middle name now. So wow. you, can, you can even drop my last name. If, I mean, my last – if you want to drop Kanata, you could drop that. I use that so people will remember me from when, when I was a Kanata. <laughs> <laughs> wow, where are you from? Middle well, Glastonbury, Connecticut, and I live in Middletown. Okay, yeah, okay, so you're both in Connecticut. Yeah, Emory right. lives about uh, twenty twenty five miles okay. down the road from me. So yeah, we're actually pretty close. In fact, okay. uh, Louise, my wife, and Anne Marie, and her husband Mike, and I often go out to dinner together and have a good time. So yeah, this is this is like a continuation of the conversations when we go out to dinner together, and we talk about all kinds uh -huh. of stuff, well, law of attraction related. It's fun. In invite me up. I'll surprise you. <laughs> Southwest is cheap. I can get there. <laughs> okay. This is me. You're invited. Great. Okay. So, I can't wait. So, <laughs> so, so Mark is going to be up here next weekend, and, and we'll be anticipating that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sounds good. I've got a great show now on the weekends. I've got, great, I've got a great comedy show on Friday night coming up. So come on up. Join us for the coconuts on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got to tell Mark what you're oh, doing too, because it. he has no idea about the buttonwood. So you have to fill him about the buttonwood. Ah, okay. So the Buttonwood Tree is a nonprofit performing arts center that I'm the executive director of. So I get to do all the booking. Oh, and uh, we run. I it. had no idea how cool you are. <laughs> I'm glad I got your name right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the first step. So you're doing great, Mark. You're doing great now. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so you can look us up online, Buttonwood.org, and uh, Friday night we've got a group, a trio coming in called the Coconuts, and these three guys they've been playing together literally for forty years. And they're hysterical wow. parodies on songs. And sometimes they dress up and they just get the audience so involved. And it's just such a fun time. And the bun, which is very small, we only seat about 45 people. So it's like being in somebody's living room and okay. great vibe and uh, a great time and good people. I, great. We are creating a new show, my uh, comedy partner and I, uh, that might, we'd love to uh, think about bringing up there. We're, um, we're combining stand up with theater. 
And it's not, it's a funny show, but not once are we standing there with a microphone talking and without going to great detail. Um, the thing is, we call it come together. It's laughter that unites us. It says, I'm a white Catholic from the South. He's a black Jew from New York. But uh, we couldn't be any different, but we're great friends. Wow. wow. And that's the theme behind the show. And, uh, uh okay. we're just, we're still getting the, uh, the, the bugs worked out of it and got to premiere it in the South. But, um, our agent's out of New York and he's got lots of theaters and casinos waiting for us to say, let's go. Yeah. But something like that. I'd love to maybe do a benefit at your, your theater for that, you know, make everybody happy. Absolutely. It's booked. Now we just got to find a date. You tell me when we'll do it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, I'll, I'll wait till we've got, uh, till we get all the bugs worked out. I'd hate to workshop it in your theater. I'd like to have the finished product. <laughs> all right. Well, I couldn't do that to you. That's fine. That's fine. But I will tell you, we, we have a lot of people who workshop at our place and then, you know, they get the bugs out at our place. Yeah. We shoo them out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, but anyway, well, we'd 2019 love- will be big. We're, we have, we'll, we'll love to have you. Good. Well, that's great. That sounds like a great project, Mark. I like it. I like the thing. Yeah, well, well, thank you. And I, I'm, I love that we're conducting business while these people are listening and trying to be entertained. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you know, when, you, when you're a comic, um, you basically prostitute yourself. So, um, you know, I see an opportunity. I start talking. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I totally can relate to that because as the director of a nonprofit, I can totally relate to, uh, to how you have to do that. Just take any opportunity to make it work. <laughs> See, what you're doing okay, here well, is, okay, is, you're, is you're practicing the law of attraction in an ideal way because the law of attraction, basically the idea of like attracts like, you want to do it when you're in your best feeling state. And right now, you're both excited. You're both laughing. You're both feeling good. It's the best time to be putting out the vibe, putting out you know, what it is that you want. So if you're in a process to it yourself, you might as well do it when you're feeling good because that's when you're going to get the best <laughs> results. That's all there is to it. I won't touch that one. <laughs> For a family show, right? It's my first time here. This is true. Yes, yes. So I don't know. We'll, okay. <laughs> okay. We will try to keep it clean. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes, sir. So, so we know a little bit about you. But we know that you're funny. We know that uh, you have this great act that you're going to do with a guy from New York. So that's cool. But uh, how'd you get started in, in uh, comedy? And, and, and what's the law of attraction connection? Because I know you have one, but uh, we haven't really touched on it yet. Well, um, I fell backwards into comedy. Uh, I used to be a, a, a nightclub DJ and a travel agent during the day wow. and uh, was good at both, but hated them. I got to <laughs> I, when I quit being a DJ, I kind of missed um, the spotlight a little bit. And uh, what I what the thing was, I didn't want to become a 30 year old club DJ because you ever seen them? They're not pretty. No. You know, they're, they're road hard and hung up wet. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, three weeks before my 30th birthday, I quit my day job at American Express and uh, I went, oh God, I'm, I'm a nightclub DJ. What am I going to do? So I quit that. I kind of missed the spotlight. Then I kind of heard about this uh, comedy workshop. And uh, it sounded like fun. It wasn't to become a comedian. I just thought I didn't have $3,500 to go to baseball fantasy camp. So I spent 150 to go to comedy fantasy camp. <laughs> and had a lot of fun. Met new people. Started doing open mics. Uh, it was a great release. And then somebody offered me money once. And then they offered me again. And like the first time they offered me 100 bucks, And 100 bucks wasn't a lot of money to me. But to do stand-up is all the money in the world. Mm. And I just kept plugging away and got to the point where I had to make a decision of the, uh, whether I keep the day job or keep the night job. And I figured, you know, in a hundred years, we're all going to be dead anyway. So I took the leap of faith. <laughs> Good for you. Good I love for it. you. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, you know, it's been, uh, it's had its ups and downs, but uh, I have no regrets if it ended tomorrow. It would have been a, a great ride. I mean, I, awesome. I've been to places and seen places I never dreamed to see. And most of them, I don't care if I ever go back to again, but I'm glad I saw them once. Yeah, that's true for like a lot of places. Iowa in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to Iowa in the winter? Not me. Oh, it, it's some of the nicest people in the world, but in total whiteout conditions. And when I opened the show, I just, you know, I was so, felt so good because these people are so nice. And I felt so sorry for them that they lived there. And all I could think of is, this looks like a beautiful town. I bet it's really beautiful in color. <laughs> it's just all white. <laughs> It had me back in the spring, you know? Yeah. I, I could tell that you have not yet played Minneapolis in the winter. Actually, I have. Uh, at uh, Oh, I can't remember what it was called, but it was in a club right next to the Mall of America. Really? And, yeah, I was in Thunder Bay, Ontario last winter. But but Minneapolis in the winter, I mean, talk, talk about a whiteout. I mean, th- there is nothing. Oh, but, yeah. But bitter cold weather. I mean, it's so cold that they don't even go outdoors. 
Mark, oh, I, they got these little t- tunnels between buildings, like little habit trails. Like, remember those things, gerbils? You had your gerbils running around in right. those little tubes? <laughs> yep. They got those between the buildings up there. Exactly. They never go outside, but for good reason. It's so bitter yeah. cold out there. Why would you want to? I mean, you step outside and you die. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to sound mean or insensitive, but they have no homeless problem up there. <laughs> they, I mean, they, they really don't. It, we notice that because they either migrate south or they die. It, it's horrible, but it is, you know, yeah. <laughs> one less thing. Well, well that's just... the thing, Mark. You see, in the wintertime, you're supposed to go south, you see. Yeah, well, and- yeah. Winter, you go south, and in the summertime, that's when you go to Minneapolis and Iowa and North Dakota. See? That's how it works. Well, yeah, but there's, there's they, they, they clo- all the comedy clubs close down in the summer because they got, like, what, about 12 good days to go outside a year? And uh, they don't want to waste it inside a comedy club. So they, in the wintertime, they're great because all they want to do is drink and laugh, and they do a lot of both because they got cabin fever in the worst way. Okay. I'm not kidding. I know it's funny, but it's, I swear that's the truth. We I love going up north in the winter. That, that's what makes it so funny because it is true. Anybody who lives in America knows that it's true. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I, this is funny. I was doing a show in uh, Broad Auburn, New York. That's right in the middle of the state in uh, February. And uh, it was funny. It was a converted barn. And I was laughing. I said, you know, I've been a comic at, the point, at that time 10 years. And I said, I've been doing comedy 10 years, mostly in the south. I had to come to New York to play my first barn. <laughs> <laughs> that's true new york and, has some pretty old but, barns too yeah and mm-hmm. it had light out conditions and there was no cars in the parking lot just snowmobiles <laughs> and uh we're sold out every show i mean these people did anything to get out of the house yep so there's i love going up there in the winter i i actually went to school in central new york uh and winters there oh. are just about as brutal as they are in iowa and not quite as brutal as they are in minneapolis but you get that uh lake effect with the snow and yeah it, it oh pretty yeah much wipes out any kind of social life it really does i was muskegon michigan first time i saw a lake effect Ooh. uh snowflakes the size of my head <laughs> and yeah i'm not and it was weird like when, when i went after the show when i went out of the parking lot um the, the club was still pretty full and the parking lot was empty and, I, and then the moonlight i had to adjust my eyes it wasn't empty it was four feet deep in snow and all the cars were covered up wow and I had to use a little uh, fob to tweak until I saw the uh, flashing snow so I could figure out where my car was. I, I kid you not. And, uh, but it was in the South, we get ice. We don't get snow. Yes. Uh, and snow's no big deal. You just brush it off and go. Right. Yeah. Ice is actually pretty dangerous. We lived in Virginia for about uh, 10, 11 years. And ice is a lot of fun, no doubt oh, you about it. probably got a mix. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, we got both in Virginia. It's not quite uh, like yeah. we got down in Georgia where, you know, of course, the problem with Georgia is you don't really have any kind of um, equipment for dealing with the harsh weather. Exactly, you're not used to it, right? It's not worth it, and so we just. And the thing is, all, uh, 80, 90 percent of the people that live here are from the north, mm-hmm. and uh, they, well, as soon as they cross the Mason-Dixon line, they all completely forget everything they ever knew about driving Absolutely. in bad weather. <laughs> it's true. It's absolutely true. I yeah, because when I, I, like I said, I grew up in upstate New York. And when you grow up there, you learn how to drive in snow. You learn how to deal with ice. You learn how to do all of it. I, right. moved, I moved to Connecticut, and I started laughing at all the drivers in Connecticut who apparently didn't know how to deal with the weather like we did in New York. And then we moved from Connecticut to Virginia, and now we found a whole bunch of drivers in Virginia who didn't know how to handle it as well as they did in Connecticut. I can only imagine what it's like down in Georgia. <laughs> oh, I mean, if there's a stop sign at the top of the hill when it's iced up, they actually stop. <laughs> and then it's... It, that's actually that, that makes for those good videos see, yes, on TV. Right. There's, there's people oh, yeah. sliding backwards down the hill. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, coming to a YouTube channel near you, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. So we, I, I still haven't figured out the answer to the other part of my question, though. Where does law of attraction fit into your background? Oh boy, I, I wish you gave me that question a few days ago to really think about it because I want to get this one right. Um, <laughs> uh, what is your answer? So I can kind of sift through my mind. Oh well, well maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you don't have well, a background. What do people say? I, I mean, I knew that you were always that, that you were aware of it. I, I, I guess I'm asking mm-hmm. how much awareness do you have, or have you, you know, have you tried to become any kind of a deliberate creator using it, or is it just something you heard about, or what, what's your knowledge level? I very little. I just um, I try to keep an open mind, and okay. uh, I believe in karma. Okay. And uh, my 
Is that anything close to what you're looking for? I don't know. Right. I'm sorry. I don't well, know how to answer that. Well, this is actually going to be fun because we, we're, we're basically going to get to introduce you to the topic in, in, in kind of a, an early steps way, but we'll get into it fairly deep pretty quickly. Oh, that's um, part of, a lot of people can on listening can learn through that. Oh, yeah. That maybe you're too embarrassed well, to ask, and I'll be the idiot. There, 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 are, there are lots <laughs> of people. Token idiot. I mean, we're, we're live streaming <laughs> to the LOA virgin. That's all, Mark. You're just the LOA that's virgin. It. I that's think we have to. You <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and, and and quite frankly, the, the Law of Attraction Changed My Life group, where we're uh, live streaming to today, gets a lot of new people, people who know little or nothing about it, and has a whole bunch of other people who know a whole lot about it. And so you get a nice mixture going on there. But uh, yeah, you're, you're oh, in good. good stead. It's not like you're you're out in, in right field all by yourself. You know, you're, you're, you're part of the team. That's okay. <laughs> But the, well, the really law of attraction is really very simple. Um, it's, it's, it's the simplest thing in the world to explain, and then it takes a lifetime to understand it. Um, but the, the concept is, is really basic. and It goes something like this. If you, if you want to understand how things come into your life, just understand one basic idea, that like attracts like. So everything that you focus on, everything that you think about, um, everything particularly that you feel about, they have emotional reaction to, emotional feeling about, um, and, and if you maintain your focus on that thing, something similar to that, or even that thing perhaps itself, something that has what they call a same vibration level, which means um, feels very much the same, has the same level of uh, positive feeling or, or even negative feeling or somewhere in between, um, something similar is going to come into your life. And the more that you focus on it, the more you're going to get. Um, so just to give you like some, some cliches that you've probably heard of, like uh, you know, bad things happen in threes. Well, that's actually law of attraction. What's happening there? It isn't that they happen okay. in threes. It's just that when you focus on one thing, you tend to get the next thing, and you tend to get the next thing, and you tend to notice them more when they happen. It's like uh, you know how if if you get a new car or even a used car, and let let's say you you got a, a new Chevy, right? And it's a blue Chevy. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say it's a I don't even know if they make the Chevy Nova anymore, but let's say it's a Chevy Nova, and then all of a sudden everywhere you start seeing blue Chevy Novas. You know how that works? Like you get a new car and all of a sudden you see the same model yeah. everywhere. Yeah, that, 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 that I'm. It happens to me uh, every time I get a new car. Exactly. And you're, you're absolutely right. Every, everybody's experienced that. Well, there are, two, there, there are two pieces to that. One piece is actually a physical piece um, because our brains are actually wired to do exactly that. We have a little thing in the back of our brains, in, in the back of our head at the brain stem called the ARAS, often shortened to the RAS. And it stands for, let's see if I can get it right, um, Reticular Activating System. Basically, it's it's what's often called the monkey brain or the lizard brain, the the, the fight or flight part of the brain. It, it, it's like the almost the prehistoric part. So, you know, some danger appears, something causes you to feel fear or whatever, and you want to either fight or, or or start running. That's that part of the brain that's acting. Well, that part of the brain also has a built-in filtering mechanism. And the way that mechanism works is whatever you have most recently been focusing attention on, and of course we focus on a lot of stuff throughout our days, but whatever you're focusing your attention on on a regular basis, that kind of thing it gets allowed in. And other stuff that you don't focus on at all doesn't get allowed in at all. And the reason for that is we have so much sensory information from our sight, uh, sound, touch, taste, and smell senses coming in that it, if our brains had to actually process all of it we would be autistic we, we would be literally incapable <laughs> of processing it all because there's so much information coming in so that brainstem actually serves a very useful purpose it filters out the junk or what that particular brain center thinks is the junk because it thinks that anything that we're focusing on most often that's the stuff that it wants to to let through each time so when you go out and buy that new car it's looking for that same kind of car all over the place that's the stuff that it's allowing through see how that works Wow. Yeah. Now, there's also the fact that, and, and this is, the law of attraction is actually uh, something that a lot of people consider to be woo-woo, meaning it's not, uh, it's not accepted by science. Mainstream science has a lot of trouble with the concept. It's considered to be somewhat spiritual or, or even mystically oriented, maybe even religiously oriented, depending on your viewpoint. And so because of that, there is a, you know, there, there's a certain um, not nice aura for some people where it's concerned. But those of us who believe and those of us who have noticed how regularly it works recognize that very often almost anything that we focus on will tend to come into our lives on a more regular basis. And yeah, you actually see it a lot. You see it 
um, in everyday life, but you don't necessarily notice it. For instance, have you ever noticed that, let's say you're mad at somebody, okay? Or maybe you're mad at a situation. And as you get mad at it and, and you start getting upset and you, you know, you, maybe you're, you know, throwing a tantrum or you're, you know, cussing out to your friends or whatever else, all of a sudden you get more stuff to get mad at. And then more stuff to get mad at that comes up. And then over the, the weeks, more and more stuff to get mad at comes in. Have you ever noticed that? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, law of attraction. All the time. That's, that, that's like attracts like. The same kind of thing attracts more of the same kind of thing. And well, you same, know what this is reminding me of is uh, the secret. Exactly. The secret is about the law of attraction. That's, okay. I just never, <laughs> I didn't make the connection just then, but I watched the video and read the book and uh, that's it. Uh, became a believer. Yeah. That stuff works. Yeah, there it uh, is. So, yeah, so, for the so, universe, it's there to give you if you just ask for it. Exactly. So, so now you understand the basics of the law of attraction. Yes. Which is cool. Well, not, I just had it under a different title. <laughs> so I was there the whole time, I promise. Well, the secret is actually one of the most popular ways to find out about the law of attraction. I would say, if I had to guess, 75% of the people who find out about the law of attraction find out about it because somebody recommended the secret to them. Mm -hmm. So you're in good stead. Yeah, that was a, a real big thing about 10 years ago. Uh, that's when I first learned about it. And when I, and again, same laws of attraction. As soon as I was interested in it, I started realizing how many people were interested in it. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. Uh, yeah. I mean, Amory, do you remember when you first became interested in law of attraction? How did you find out about it? 2001, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was um, uh, a friend of mine started giving me the cassette tapes of Abraham's workshops and I started listening to them. And I, I think the one that I most vividly remember is segment intending mm. because I still utilize that today, but it was back in 2001 and I started listening to cassette tapes and then uh, we started listening to the CDs and, you know, now I listen to Abraham online for YouTube and all that. And I've gone to see them once, just once. It's quite an experience, isn't it? It is. It's, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's it is. I'd love to do a cruise someday, but who knows? What she's hey, talking. Can you what, tell what, me the name of that Facebook group again? Oh, it's the Law of Attraction Changed My Life. That's the group we're live streaming to. And it's a group, right? Yes, it's a big, very large group. They've got almost ninety thousand members in that group. So yeah, it's a pretty big group. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, but the uh, she was referring to uh, the Abraham workshops. Abraham is. Now, we're, we're starting to get into real woo-woo territory here, okay? Um, Abraham <laughs> is the collective non-physical, meaning not part of the physical world, but part of the spiritual world, non-physical collection of beings that is received by a woman named Esther Hicks. Um, and she and her husband, Jerry, who has since passed on, um, traveled around the country giving workshops, and she still travels around the country giving workshops, where she basically receives these messages from Abraham and shares them with the audience and usually they also have somebody from the audience who's sitting in what they call the hot seat, like the main seat right in front. And that person's having a conversation with Abraham through Esther as voiced by Esther. So it's, it's pretty woo-woo stuff. It's pretty weird. But the stuff that comes out of Abraham is mind-bogglingly good, really, really good stuff. It's probably the best, clearest explanation of how the law of attraction works and how things in our lives work. I mean, things that we, you know, why is it, you know, what happens when, when we die, all, you know, all these other ultimate questions, you know, why do things happen the way they happen in life? I mean, just amazing amounts of information that have come out of Abraham. So a lot of people who are followers of the law of attraction are also Abraham followers. And in fact, the secret was originally inspired by Rhonda Byrne being exposed on one of those cruises that Anne Marie referred to to Abraham. And in fact, the original version of the secret included Esther Hicks as one of the presenters of the secret. Really? Yeah. When was that? Well, the secret I think came out in 2006. And okay, that's, the first that's I think it was the first 100,000 copies had Esther Hicks included. I actually have a copy of one of those original DVDs. And then there was a, a thing between Rhonda Byrne, who produced and created The Secret, and uh, the Abraham Hicks organization. And basically, I, from what I understand, it's kind of hazy what happened. There's a lot of stories around. But the best story, that I, the most complete story, and the most consistent story I've heard is that um, Rhonda was concerned that because 
Esther receives these messages, she would be alienating a bunch of people who are very religiously oriented, and, and Rana didn't want to do that, so she kind of pushed her out. Really? That's interesting. That's not yeah. what I heard. There are a lot I of stories. It. There are a lot of stories. I heard it was all about the term vibration, and that the, uh, mm -hmm. Esther and That's Mary one. wanted to use the term vibration, and publishers said, no, you can't use that term vibration, and so they no. backed out of it. That, that was also, there, there are a lot of stories. Nobody has ever actually confirmed any of them. That's the thing that's so interesting because um, Abraham Hicks won't tell us. They won't say. Rhonda Byrne won't say. And so you have all these rumors and stories circulating around. <laughs> but anyway, it doesn't matter. Maybe they just want you all, maybe, maybe they just want everybody to, to decide for themselves. Oh, I think that's probably true. Thank there's there's a lot of truth to that. Sure. Yeah. Because ultimately, that's what all this stuff is anyway. I mean, you, if you believe in this stuff, that's because you chose to believe in it. And, and that actually plays a pretty important role in all of this. The idea that you believe it and therefore you attract it. Belief is a huge um, component of how people become what we call deliberate creators using the law of attraction. So, see, you're no longer a virgin. You are now an official law of attraction devotee. No. <laughs> well, I was like I said, I was there several years ago when I first uh, read and watched that DVD of Secret. So I just did, and I should have. I should have made the connection. <laughs> That's all right. So, no problem. No problem. Work with me. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing exactly that, and we're. I know. It. I know. In so, fact, Mark, I have, I have a question, Mark. So, after you saw that DVD of the Secret, did you try deliberately mm -hmm. utilizing the law of attraction then, or did you try deliberately creating anything? And did you have any success with that? Did you Did you try that at all? Actually, I did. I um. Uh, I, at the same time, I believe in the power of prayer because it's really, you know, tomato, tomato to me anyway. Right. And um, it just, uh, well, just like you said, when you get that new car and you start looking for other cars like it uh, unconsciously, I would start, um, I do it on a daily basis. I ask for bookings, believe it or not, along with everything else. Why not? And uh, just when uh, things are the worst, I, I'll Sometimes it's, I wish I'd give an ex a concrete example, but some of the weirdest things would come up, which uh, ultimately turns into a show, which turns into the money I need. And if um, you just know how to take a step back and look uh, at what just happened, it's uh, phenomenal. And just, it, it just concretes just uh, your belief, or at least my belief. Mm -hmm. It's cool when that happens, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's surprising, yeah. but it's cool. It's like, oh, yeah, it happened again. This is great. Exactly. So, so you, yeah, I mean, is that like your favorite that, way to do bookings now? Pretty much. A, I mean, are you are, are you are, are you a law of attraction scheduler? Is that how you do your bookings now? <laughs> uh, no, uh, but uh, like right now, my December's pretty light, and uh, usually it, they fill up quicker for parties and all that. But uh, I'm not worried. I know I've, I keep here uh, getting these different emails from people, and uh, something always comes up. I, I don't try to live my life just saying, you know, I'm always trying to prepare. That's and good. work hard, but uh, at the same time, when sometimes you can work your butt off and you don't have the results you want, but you just keep believing. That, that's really and, good, actually. That that's probably one of the areas where people trip up the most because they want stuff to happen so badly, and then they get themselves into a bad feeling place, and all of a sudden they're attracting the opposite of what they wanted. Yeah. See, I mean, you can see how that would that work, right? Sense. Because I mean, if yeah. if, you're, if you're if you're fearing that you know you're not going to get any more bookings, you're going to attract getting no more bookings. <laughs> I mean, it works both ways. That's that, the nature of it, right? Yeah, I remember that the secret explained that it says don't tell the universe not to send me bookings because it's going to hear you to exactly. say not bookings. Yeah, it says tell them you want the bookings, want the bookings, or what yeah. you want. Not, don't tell them what you don't want because it's just that you'll get what what you're asking for inadvertently. And you also mm -hmm. get you also get people who get confused about the word no or not. Because um, what actually happens is it isn't that the universe hears your words. The universe hears what we call your vibration, which is just what you're feeling. You know, how, are, is yeah. it something you're feeling good about? Is it something you're feeling bad about? Whatever it is, whatever the thing that you're feeling about, if you're feeling it particularly strongly, that's what the universe is reacting to. So you can say, um, let's say, I want bookings and deep down feel like you're not going to get any bookings. And you won't because your words were in contradiction with what you were feeling. And your feelings win. Yeah. So it doesn't matter that you said I uh, I want the bookings, or or you could say maybe it's just the opposite. I don't want I, I don't want to be getting bad any bad reviews, and all you're thinking about is getting those bad exactly. reviews. Exactly. 
So you can say, I, no bad reviews exactly. all you want to, and you're still going to get the bad reviews. So it's, 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 it's based on how you feel. It's based on what you're reacting to. It's based on what you're, um, you know, what, what you're feeling. Feeling is actually the main determinant more than anything else. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. your experience, isn't it, Anne-Marie? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and a lot of times things will manifest that you're not even thinking about because you're not focused on them and you've already put your desire out into the universe and you don't block it at all. I'll never forget, I put out into the universe, I wanted a yellow kayak and like three weeks later, this yellow kayak showed, showed up and I'm like, wow, <laughs> yellow kayak. I hadn't even thought about it. Like since I had put the wish out, I wasn't focused on it at all, but I, you know, I wasn't blocking it at all either. And then all of a sudden, this yellow kayak showed up. I'm like, whoa, there's a yellow kayak. <laughs> that's spooky. Well, that's that's how it works. In a good way. Freaky. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's very freaky. And then I sat in the yellow kayak. I'm like, eh, I don't think I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's called a tractor's remorse. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me wonder. I was like, wow, maybe I have to be more specific or, uh, you know, because like I got something that I had asked for, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. So, you know, the universe can bring you things. It doesn't necessarily mean that's what's best for you. It's just, that's what you got. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's interesting too. Is the guy like getting socks one. from your aunt on Christmas? <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> no. Big well, box all wrapped up and it's just full of underwear and socks. Well, it just yeah. depends on what you expect. If you expect socks and underwear from your aunt, guess what? There you go. <laughs> I mean, it's really that simple. <laughs> so now you may be wondering, how is it that we have uh, a topic that now that we've got it narrowed down, we have a pretty good idea of how this thing works. How do we have a topic that actually can translate into an ongoing series of topics? And it seems on the surface that's that's impossible. But as it turns out, the law of attraction applies in every aspect of our lives. Everything, that, And this is where it gets a little mind boggling. Because literally everything that comes into our lives, we attract it. And that, that seems kind of strange. I, mean, I, I went out and I bought groceries today. How could I possibly say that I attracted them? And yet I did. And, and that's where it gets a little confusing. Because, you know, we, we go out and we just do regular things, right? We, we go out and we, we buy the new car. Or, you know, we, we go out and, and we have a vacation. Or, or we uh, get a new job. Or we make a new relationship with somebody or whatever. How did I attract all those things? A lot of times you don't really know exactly how you did it in the background. Some of it, you attracted it through your direct efforts. Uh, but as Abraham likes to point out, attracting by doing it first is not your best bet. Your best bet is to think it out and feel it out ahead of time. Let the universe do the heavy lifting and makes your life a lot more enjoyable. When you mm -hmm. try to do it yourself, then you tend to, it, it becomes easier to get into a place where you're not feeling good about it. I mean, like for instance, you're, you're looking for that job, right? And you want that ideal job to come and it's not coming. And you're not feeling real good about it. And the more you not feel good about it, the less it comes. Or maybe what does come is stuff that you don't like. So that, that's where the doing part actually can kind of get in the way because your feelings get along for the ride. It's not like your feelings ever get turned off, right? It's not like your, your, your choices about what you like and what you don't like get turned off. And when you're, when you're trying to get there by doing and stuff isn't showing up quickly, then your attitude starts to fall and you start to feel bad about it and you start to feel disappointed. And now you're in a place where you're attracting the wrong stuff. See how it works? Yeah. I don't know if this actually applies, but it reminds me of something somebody told me a long time ago, that it's, it's mind boggling that any of us is where we are because all <laughs> yeah. the choices and forks in the road you took to get there, there's a twisty, turny twi uh, path getting there. But when you look back, um, it all made sense. And he said, yeah, hindsight's very linear. Mm -hmm. Never, and it's like looking back, it all made perfect sense how you got there, even though you know, every step you took was a choice. Right. And, and they, and they kind of think that if you are following the laws of attraction, you're hopefully making the right choices. Well, you know, that's the other thing is when, it, when you listen to Abraham talk about the law of attraction, it, you, you have to um, allow the universe to bring you what you want, but you are listening to your gut, which is guiding you to make the phone call or go to a certain place at a certain time or actually do the things that you need to do in order to rendezvous 
with what the law, what the universe is sending you. So you do have to do things, but your gut will guide you to what it is you have to do. And so you have to kind of stay focused and be positive and all that kind of stuff. But you also have to do what your gut tells you to do. And I think that when you're when you're listening to your gut, um, then it, it sort of guides you on the path that that will lead you to exactly what you want. And and that's the trick for me. That's the hardest part is not staying positive or feeling good. For me, the hardest part is listening to my gut because sometimes I get so wrapped up in what I'm doing and I'm so busy running around doing this, doing that. I I, I don't tune in my gut enough, and that's why I'm taking this Nikki class so I can try to tune into myself better and, and be more peaceful and more calm so I can hear my gut better, my gut instinct. You know, I I notice sometimes. Sometimes all of a sudden you'll your you'll notice your eyes are attracted to something in the room or your your head will just turn a certain way and your something will just sort of pop out at you and it'll be like oh I need to take that with me or oh I need to do something with that and that's your your inner self guiding you to what you have to do next or take with you or or whatever so tuning in to your inner guide that really uh takes you to the next step of, of manifesting all those things that you want i think anyway by the way uh you made you okay. mentioned the uh, magic word there reiki he wanted to know what reiki is so why don't you tell him a little bit about reiki sure well reiki is basically universal life force energy and it's 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 the energy that runs through everything it's uh sometimes you could call it chi energy or it's just uh just the energy that's made up of stuff and reiki is sort of a practice of uh, focusing your attention or your hands on a person or an animal to sort of open up the pathways and allow that energy to flow in a more um, more focused way, I guess. And I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not describing this in the most, uh, in the in the best way that I could. <laughs> You're doing okay. I'm new to all this, but <laughs> but this healing energy, and when you put your hands on somebody, um, or or even just above somebody, you can allow that energy to come through, and it's, it's very healing. I mean, people have been healed from all sorts of diseases and, and all kinds of things wow. through it. Um, my first experience with Reiki, I had no idea what it was called back then, but I had given birth to my <laughs> first child, my first daughter, and I was laying on the table and I started shaking. My whole body just started shaking uncontrollably. And I wasn't even cold. And I said to the nurse, I said, I, I'm not even cold. Why am I shaking? And she said, oh, that's normal. Don't worry. And, I, and she said, I, I, I can help you. Just relax. And she put her hands over my head about maybe two, three inches of my head. And then she started to move her hands slowly down my body, you know, across my face, across my chest. And everywhere she put her hands, my body stopped shaking. And finally, she got wow. toes, and my entire body had stopped shaking. And I realized now I realize, you know that that was Reiki. She didn't say to me, "I'm doing Reiki." She just said, "You know, just relax." I'm just, you know. And um, so it's amazing how how powerful it can be. Yeah, so, it really is. In <laughs> fact, um, I, I had a, kind of a similar experience—not childbirth, but <laughs> I had an experience with energy. <laughs> And uh, my, my wife occasionally gets um, migraine headaches, and she had a friend who uh, was into the Reiki. I don't remember exactly what the connection was, whether she was a Reiki master or whatever. But uh, she managed to get a page of uh, one of the Reiki books that you're really not supposed to get because it's supposedly only for the people who are the true students of it. But somehow we got a page out, and the page described this process that you're supposed to do to help clear energy out of the body when someone has pain or you know, suffering from something. And she, so uh, my wife hands it to me and says, here, would you do it? I said, uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I read the thing over. It was actually pretty simple. So I, I follow the steps that it's describing. And um, it, it, it describes kind of what Anne-Marie just described um, in much more simple terms because it was just one page out of the manual. But uh, essentially it had me sweeping energy away. And it said, keep your hand relatively close to the body, within a couple inches of the body. And it mentioned that you should be able to feel energy at the point where there is pain or discomfort going on. 
And so I asked Louise, well, where are you feeling the pain? And, and so she pointed to her, her head where she was feeling the pain. I held my hand over it. And on my palm, right about here on my palm, I actually could feel like it, it was almost like a magnetic field. If you know what I mean, wow! I, I could actually yeah. feel it over that point. And if I moved my hand around that point, I could feel the magnetic field shifting on my palm. I said, whoa, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> that was really cool. I don't know what that was. And I would sweep the energy away the way it explained to him. And after doing that for about 15 or 20 minutes, the field would clear. In other words, that point right above her head would no longer have that magnetic feeling field to it. And so I figured, well, that's when I'm done. And I asked her, how are you feeling? And she didn't feel a whole lot better, but it was night. And so I said, well, let's see if you can go to sleep. She went to sleep, woke up the next morning, no headache. So, okay, well, that was wow. pretty cool. And then a few months later or some period of time later, happened again. She had another headache. Could you try your, your magic again? And I said, well, sure. I don't know what's doing here, but try it again. <laughs> Same result. Woke up the next morning, no headache. Like, this is cool. This is cool stuff. And and we've used this, I don't know how many times since then, to help her, you know, clear a migraine headache. So there is my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Whatever works. Yeah. 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 It's cool stuff. So that, now you have uh, at least a, a slight introduction to Reiki. What we need to do is get Anne Marie's husband, Mike, on because he's a Reiki master. And, and he'll, of course, he'll talk our, our ears off about Reiki. He loves it. That and uh, Qigong and, and Tai Chi, those are his big thing. Is that right, Anne Marie? Uh, yeah, absolutely. He feels energy like like nobody feels energy. I mean, he can he can feel it from across the room. He can sense it and feel feels energy really. Um, uh, deep, you know, he's just really intuitive to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's amazing what people can do. And uh, he he has um, he he's developing his own thing, and I, I still don't quite get it. It has to do with bamboo sticks and why bamboo sticks. I don't know. He's tried to explain it to me. I've I've nodded in all the right places, and I still don't understand what he's talking about. But do, do you have any idea what he's talking about, Amory? Well, I know I used a bamboo stick to stretch. Um, you know, it's a, it, it, I think years ago it was a fighting tool, an implement to fight or something. But he uses it to stretch and uh, just sort of maneuver maneuver your body in ways, and uh, that without the stick, it's a lot harder to do. And so it helps you to really just push your body to stretch a little bit further than, than you could otherwise. And it's oh. kind of, I think well, that's it. See, if he'd explained it that way, I would have understood that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he gave me this long technical explanation. I'm sitting there saying, okay, my eyes are glazing over. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> well, that happens. yes, he can, because he, he, he gets into a lot more of the detail and, you know, underlying theories and all that kind of stuff. And I just gave it to you. You know, that's just how I interpret it. I can stretch better. <laughs> you, you, you gave me the Cliff Notes version. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, okay. Well, let's see. We've got about uh, five, six, seven minutes left. Um, I do want to make sure that uh, anyone who's listening, particularly in the Facebook group where we're live streaming today, um, if you're interested in following our podcast, you can tell they get a little bit wacky sometimes. Um, but we often do get down to very um, in-depth conversations about various aspects about how people apply the law of attraction in their lives, how they deal with energy, all kinds of good stuff. And it's not just us three here because I I can't believe this, Anne-Marie. I now have 12 co-hosts. Can you believe that? I've got 12 co-hosts. Yes, yeah, that's great. Busy guy. I mean, it's unbelievable. We do 11 shows a week, and it's a it's a different mixture every single show, um, Monday through Friday, twice a day, um, once in the morning, New York time, 8 a.m., once in the afternoon, 4 p.m., New York time. And uh, th that gives us 10 shows a week, plus this one that we do here is the 11th, and you, they're a blast. So if, if you want to keep up oh, with all we're doing, just, guys. Just admit it. Just admit it. You're lazy, and you're trying to delegate. No, actually, I love it. Seriously, you bring in <laughs> seriously. I, I, can tell. I can really tell. I mean, I just no, love really, I doing this it. thing. This is like I, I live for these. There, there are days where I actually have withdrawal. Saturdays are rough for me because I don't have any podcasts. Oh. I'm actually thinking of adding one on Saturday just so that I can get the energy from it because I get energized. By doing this. <laughs> I'm serious. I really do. <laughs> it's really something. <laughs> I believe you. I believe it. Believe it. <laughs> so anyway, all that's a long, long way around uh, way to. Ask you if you if you're not a subscriber and you want to subscribe, please do subscribe. If you're listening in the uh, Facebook group, the links that you can click on to become subscribers are down in the description of the post that you're looking at. And if you're, of course, uh, listening on the podcast itself, maybe you've, you've just found the podcast and and you're listening and you're you're enjoying it. 
All the instructions can be found on the homepage of our website at LOAToday.net. So be sure that you become a subscriber and you'll never miss a single episode that we put out. And by the way, once you've also subscribed, this is for all of our existing subscribers and listeners as well. Please share on social media. That sharing is making a big difference. Um, I've told Anne Marie this before, but uh, Mark, it's unbelievable. In the last three months since we've been really pushing people who are listeners to share that they're listening on LOAToday.net on their favorite social media channel, we have literally doubled our listenership. Wow. It doesn't take long. If you get it, just everybody to click share once. It really does work. It's an amazing thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so keep talking about LOAToday.net on you know Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or LinkedIn or Reddit or whatever it is that you use because it, it, it helps a great deal. Um, yeah, the Buttonwood uh, Facebook page. I share it to Buttonwood, and then I share it on the Buttonwood page. Oh, terrific. That's great. Fabulous. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. I'll have to do some uh, – I'll, I'll have to return the favor. I'll, have I shared back to Buttonwood? I don't know if I've done that, so I'll have to make sure I do that from the LOA Today page. Come to the Buttonwood tree. You should come this weekend. I know we're getting near the end of uh, Louise's gardening season. We got two weeks left, and this is like you know we're on the home stretch, right? So we got to yeah. get through this part. But we'll be by the time November rolls around, we're going to be ready to just do some relaxing. That's going to be a good time to come down to the Buttonwood. Good, good, good. Yeah. Well, that sounds good, Walt. Yeah. Any of our hey. listeners, we do have listeners uh, in Connecticut. Any of our listeners in Connecticut, check out the Buttonwood in Milltown, Connecticut. I mean, you have some of the most amazing um, entertainment coming through there, and and you live stream some of them too on your phone, don't you? We do, yeah. So you can check out out uh, check us out on Facebook. Um, I'm Anne Marie Canada McEwen. You can check me out, and then usually I share them to the Buttonwood Tree, but um, sometimes I forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. But you do pretty well, good like job. anybody's going to be able to spell that. <laughs> you just roll through that name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have to go to uh, Walt's page, LOAToday.net. There you go. You can find me. That's the easy way to page. find her. There you there go. You go. I don't know. Walt, is my name up there somewhere on LOAToday.net? Well, you have your own category. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. That's yeah, right. All, so. all the shows that we do with you, you, all those shows show up under your category. So, yeah, they're all right there. I just, good, I, good I'll add some information about how, you know, f- how to find the buttonwood, and I'll add the link to your description there for, for your category Yeah, that'd page. be great. That'd be great. Thank okay. you. Yeah, my pleasure. Glad to do it. And, Mark, what's Thank happening you. with you? I mean, uh, I know that you said things are kind of light in December, but you probably got uh, some bookings coming up. What's happening? Yeah, I'm. Um, I, I can't even tell you the name of the city. It's uh, near, ne- right next to Cincinnati. I'm uh, playing at the casino. I think it's the Redwood Casino this mm-hmm. coming weekend. Okay, sounds and good. And then I'm judging a contest in Savannah the week after that. Judging a contest? A comedy contest. Oh, Look, comedy uh, contest. Savannah runs a contest every year. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you're, you're one of the celebrity judges. <laughs> well, I let them think that. As long as, they, as long as they're thinking it. Don't disabuse I'm a, them. Don't disabuse I'm them. I'm attracting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I also got to ask you, too, because we, we really, mm-hmm. especially since it's the first show and we're kind of introducing you on the show, we do have actually more, a few more minutes than I realized. Um, what what do you do in your in your uh, Southern Not Stupid show what 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 is it that makes the show so unique well, so so you oh, thanks for asking um actually people on uh, southern not stupid.com you can see some video of me and a song video i produced wrote and produced it's um as a lifetime southerner i'm just sick and tired of everybody thinking we're stupid just because from the south uh lots of, you know, you're right we do have a lot of stupid people but so does everybody else <laughs> and through humor I, I just go coast to coast and tell people point out that they're stupid too <laughs> that's nice to know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's universal, and um, or like one of the things I'll say um, is I blame Hollywood for the stereotype because as long as they've been uh, uh, as long as we've been alive, they've been putting stuff out like Dukes of Hazard, Hee Haw, Green Acres. Um, you, you, when you people watch this, admit it, you subliminally think those are documentaries, don't you? <laughs> See, I didn't know See, what they were to be that's perfectly honest. Do humor. I... <laughs> when I was when I was um, growing up, and shows like that were on television, I would look at them, and I wouldn't even laugh at them. I'd look at them wide-eyed, like, "What are they doing? I don't understand." <laughs> See, See? <laughs> and that's uh, that's what I've been fighting all my life, and uh, and the best way to do it is just uh, through the humor. And when I go place to place, I I'll, I'll, I'll just want to level the playing field. I'll admit the things we do that are dumb. And I just wrote something today. Uh, I, I noticed uh, I had all four valve caps 
off my tires were missing. And I realized there's a guy next door trying to siphon the air out of my tires and steal it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, dear. That's not so good. Uh, But you mentioned mentioned Hee Haw. Actually, Hee Haw is, is one of my favorite programs to cite when discussing the law of attraction, believe it or not. Because they, oh, yeah? they, they sang a song that was a wonderful song. It's a song that illustrates one of the best ways that you can turn things around when you're feeling bad. Cause oh, but if I don't have any bad luck, there ain't no luck at all. That that's one? the one. That's the one. I know it. That's perfect. <laughs> it, it, it is the bloom, the, despair, and agony on me. That was it. <laughs> the, the, those are oh, the I best lyrics ever created. Because not because of the lyrics themselves. The lyrics themselves sound gloomy, but they sang them to the happiest tune you could possibly sing them to, and that's <laughs> what made it work. That was great. I mean, they're playing their banjos and they're tired. Gloom, despair, and agony on me, and it's just it's great. It's wonderful. <laughs> oh, you, you got that guy in the background. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think they called that picking and a grinning, but that's exactly what they yeah, were doing. Yeah, yeah. It was good. I, w- I loved that. That was just wonderful. <laughs> and it was a great message. Well, because... I would love to bring the show up to uh, the, to your theater and uh, try to educate or level the playing field up there some. I think that you should. That great. I would, love to, I would love you to come on up and do that. And boy, you got a lot of merchandise on your website. Look at all these t-shirts. Wow. Oh, yeah. Mugs and <laughs> You've got baby clothes. Baby clothes. My I see that. That's great. Now, wow. now, when you get to the song video, uh, it's funny as I have no musical background and I'm not a country music fan, but I wrote a country music song to promote my brand. And uh, I hope you'll watch it. I'd like to hear what you think. Um, I will. It's, 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 fun, it's a funny, it's funny uh, way of uh, saying what I try to say in my show. Okay. We, we can't get you to perform it here, can we? What's that? I said we can't get you to perform it here, can we? Oh no! Oh, the the song. Yeah, I have a. Uh, I, I I can play it for you because when you hear it, I'm doing the spoken intro, uh, and I hired a, another comic to. He actually wrote the music and uh, sang it for me. Oh, I see. Okay, and so got me the studio time. Okay. No, no, you. If uh, if I sing it, that's going to um, be all the laws of uh, disattraction. So we don't want to do that. <laughs> I got you. We're going to blow out all the microphones. I got it. Okay. Yeah, we're going to. Yeah, we're going to ruin all the good work you've done the last yeah. hour. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, I got a question for you, Mark. Do you know yeah. um, you know a lot of other comics? Yeah. Do you know a guy named Sammy Obeid? Or I'm not sure I'm saying his name right. Obeid? O-B-E-I-D? Hmm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I was Facebook friends with him, but where is he from up that way? Or I think he's from New York. I'm not sure, but he's coming to the Buttonwood Tree on Halloween for to do a benefit oh. for him. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Nice segue. Okay. That, that was a good way to get a promo in. I like that, Anne Marie. Initiative. Yeah. Way to go. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> well, she promoted my store. She she promoted my own online store, so I couldn't thank her enough for that. So a, yeah, a promote away. I was good. <laughs> you didn't you didn't even have to ask her. She just did it. I mean, that was great. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know why she did that? Why is that? Because for the last hour, I've been thinking it. I've been thinking it for the last ah, hour, okay. <laughs> and it happened. It happened. <laughs> there you go. He was just hoping somebody would go look at his t-shirts and there look is. at his mugs. And- oh no, I wasn't hoping. I was knowing. There you I go. knew you well, would. That, that is the difference. Would. That's the Man, difference. Man, you understand the law of attraction better than we thought. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I was hoping, it might not be till two or three weeks from now. You look, but I just knew it. I get that first one in. I love it. <laughs> oh man, you sure live up to your name, Mark. You sure are Southern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to live up to the title of this show. Well, there yeah. you go. <laughs> oh, this has been great. Well, guys, I really appreciate that uh, we're doing this together. And and I mean, if this is this is like the first show that we've done together as a team, and we're doing the live stream at the same time, which is really remarkable. But. I mean, if this is any indication of what it's going to be like going forward, this is going to be a show no one's going to want to miss because this is insane. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. This is, I mean, and this, uh, the thought that we're talking to, what did you say in that email uh, you sent? About like 89,000 people? Yeah, members of the group. Yeah, there, there are 89,000 yeah. members of that group. I mean, that, I don't know how many. Kind of potential, and, and who knows how many will be next week. Yeah, you never know. People start keep sharing. Not not to mention all of our existing subscribers that we already have on, on LA today. So, yeah, we're... We're growing. We're reaching out to more and more people, and that's a cool thing. So, guys, thank you so much for doing the show, and I uh, look forward Very to talking cool. to you guys next week. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, nice to meet you, Mark. Sort of. 
You too. I uh, can't <laughs> wait to see you guys in person. All right. All right. Sounds that's good. <laughs> hey, that's going to happen probably sooner than you expect, Amber. Don't ex- don't be surprised if he so. shows up at the Buttonwood unannounced, like within the next week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to say we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. Good night.